Welcome to Rust for the Windows Runtime, the latest language projection for Windows. Rust is a systems programming language. The Rust language syntax is comparable to that of C++ and also provides performance on par with modern C++. However, Rust is built on the promise of guaranteed memory safety without the need for garbage collection. Why Rust? Well, it could have something to do with the fact that it is the most beloved programming language by far, year after year. It may have a steep learning curve, but once you're over the hump, it's hard not to fall in love. Much like C++ 1RT, Rust 1RT is an open source language projection developed on GitHub. We accept contributions, so feel free to chip in. As a Rust developer, you're probably already using Cargo along with Crates.io to manage your dependencies. The good news is that the 1RT crate gives you immediate access to the Windows API. You can also find Rust documentation for the 1RT crate over on docs.rs. Not convinced? Let's write some code. At the command prompt, let's use Cargo to create a new Rust project. And let's make that the current directory. And we'll open that in VS Code. Now open the project's Cargo Toml file and add WinRT as a dependency. That's the latest version. Now let's open the main source file. And before we even write any code, let's make sure we can build and run by hitting the Run shortcut. Down in the terminal window, you can see that it successfully downloaded and compiled the WinRT crate before building the sample and running it. Great, now let's import some types. First the dependencies, and then the types from within those dependencies. The import macro takes care of resolving any dependencies in the form of WinMD files and generating bindings for selected types directly from metadata. In this case, it's going to generate bindings for all the types in the Windows Foundation namespace. I can now use the types from this namespace as if it were a simple Rust module. And of course, use any of the types within the namespace. And I'll make use of Rust's error propagation and short-circuiting logic to save on typing. That's the question mark operator. That'll just avoid us having to do a bunch of manual error handling. Now let's use the Windows Web Syndication API to download this RSS feed. In this case, I'm only importing the specific type from the syndication namespace. In this way, you can import as little or as much as is needed and avoid spending time waiting for code to be generated and compiled that you'll never need. Of course, the import macro will make sure that any dependent types are also included automatically. I can now create a new syndication client object. That's the equivalent of the default constructor in Rust. And now we can use it to retrieve the feed. As this is an async API, I can either use the blocking get function or use the await operator within an async function, much as you would do in C Sharp or C++. Now I can simply iterate over the resulting items. And let's print out just the titles. Now let's hit that Run button again. It's just that easy. Under the hood, however, a lot of love goes into building the tooling so that Rust can both parse WinMD files based on ECMA 335 at compile time and also faithfully honor the COM-based ABI at runtime with both safety and efficiency in mind.